Do you remember when Microsoft Loop was described as atomic units of productivity? Loop components are atomic units of productivity that give you live, connected, and actionable experiences to get work done. Well, I think it was secretly a genius description. I want to introduce you to a theory of collaboration that I believe Loop is leaning into. As more of Microsoft Loop is revealed over the coming year and beyond, this theory may help you learn and explain simple collaboration in Loop. Let me explain. Microsoft Loop is the combination of a flexible canvas, portable productivity components, and the blocks within those components. We add components to Teams chats, Outlook email, documents, and whiteboards. But let's focus on components for now. Loop components are like molecules, and the blocks inside them are like atoms. The blocks in a loop component are what we use to create content and collaborate with our team. Individual blocks are helpful on their own, and each block can meet a small productivity need. A list, a table, a functional block like a mention or a date. If we use atoms to describe the blocks that make up loop components, we might use a periodic table format of sorts to understand them better. Now where have we seen Microsoft productivity explained using a periodic table before? Check out Matt Wade's M365 periodic table over on Jump2365. It brings together Microsoft 365 apps and arranges them on different activities of collaboration. But I want to look closer than M365 apps. I want to go down deep into the simple atomic building blocks of productivity. Let's use a periodic table and list the blocks available today that we can use inside loop components. Each of the blocks are like elements on a table and they have their own properties and fill a need. I'll start by adding a paragraph to a Teams chat. It doesn't matter what block you start with, sharing a component creates a place that becomes our flexible canvas. Type in a forward slash on the page and you'll see a list of blocks available to use. As you continue to type the name of the block, the suggestions are narrowed down, and this is where I lean into the periodic table of atoms and elements. When you type the first two letters of a loop block, it's usually enough to find what you're looking for. Forward slash BU is a bulleted list, so let's use BU on the table. It's a simple list with no particular order necessary or implied. Forward slash NU is a numbered list. NU is a simple list with a numerical order forward slash ch, a checklist. ch is a simple functional list. You can check items off as you complete them. You see how I've listed the simplest type of blocks at the top? Kind of like when you're listing H for hydrogen at the top left hand corner of the periodic table. Hydrogen is a simple atom, one proton, one neutron, one electron. The numbered list is slightly more functional. Then at the bottom of our table, the checklist, a functional list. Now let's look at a different type of loop block. They're functional blocks. Forward slash DA lets you select a date block. You can pick a date to insert. The date displays relative to your current date. Well, that's the relative theory anyway. Then there's the at mention. Use it to search and find the person you're looking for. It's a highly functional block because it notifies the person that's been mentioned. Then they can use that notification to jump directly to the loop and the position in the loop where they were mentioned. They get up to speed very quickly because they get to read the context before they contribute. There's forward slash TA, a table, the most versatile loop block. It is like carbon of the periodic table of elements. We can create columns to list items and store information about them, much like SharePoint lists, only simpler. Create and edit columns. You can drag columns around in a different order. You can even put some loop blocks inside the cells of a table, like a checklist or a date. Now each of these blocks are useful on their own, in their current state, on their own. But a lot of people don't realize that you can add more blocks to a loop component. You can combine them, compound them together in the same component. In loop theory, we combine blocks within components to meet our collaborative and productivity needs. Add two or more blocks and you get a compounding collaborative effect. There are some ready-made combinations of loop blocks available when we use the forward slash. They are called table templates. Forward slash TAS is a taskless table. The properties are checklist, a people mention for an assignment, a date for uh, when it's due. Then there's the voting table which is coming soon. A table which has a voting counter column. 
There's a status tracker, which is also coming soon. This has a people mention for assignments. Then there's this new label block for a status picker. And you can set a due by date and a checklist for blockers. But we can make our own combinations of loop blocks to fit our needs. Remember, loop components can be your flexible canvas. Add any component available and any block available. Use a table if you want to put components in order and store information about them. Some simple loop combos are meeting notes. Add a table to list agenda items, the person leading the item, the time allocated for that item in the meeting. Then add a section a bit further down the loop component for meeting notes and use a bulleted list. Further down again, add a task list table for the follow-up actions showing assignments and due dates. Meeting notes are a great way to get everyone on the same page and easily share in team chats and email conversations before, during and after the meeting. What about making decisions? Use a table block, add columns to list the idea or decision point, a bullet list for reference links and a column with a people block for the assignment. We know that the voting table is coming soon with a voting button to show your support. For now, you could mention yourself in a column the version management will confirm that you added your own name and not someone else. Document co-creation is a good scenario for loop components. You will use an office application like Word, of course, to create and publish the document. But in the ideas phase, when you're creating an outline or coordinating tasks, a loop component would be helpful. Create a table for listing topics and an outline of the document. In the second column, add a bullet list of high level points to cover in that topic, and use the third column to assign a topic to a person. Soon, you'll be able to add loop components to Word Online and combine loop blocks to coordinate your document co-creation. Are you getting the idea now? Combining blocks and loop components can provide compounding collaborative capabilities. Do you also see how loop components are like atomic units of productivity now? They're elements on a periodic table, capable on their own, powerful when combined, and providing a range of possibilities. As Microsoft releases more loop blocks, the periodic table will fill with elements till, well, anything is possible.